Hello. Today we're going to focus on labor supply, specifically how to solve a Cobb-Douglas type utility function with labor supply. Here we have a utility function over recreation and consumption. These are our two goods. No longer are we looking at goods like apples and oranges, but instead we're looking at ideas. Here we have recreation or the number of hours we choose to consume using recreation. And here, C, we have the amount of units of consumption I purchase. This means we're aggregating the amount of apples and oranges that I used to purchase and making that one variable. For our budget constraint, it's going to look a little different than before. Our typical framework for a budget constraint is P1x1 plus P2x2 equals M. With labor supply, we're looking at the same thing, but instead a little bit different in terms of the variables. So we're going to say WR plus C equals M plus W L bar. Here we still have the price of recreation, which is our opportunity cost of working. That's our wage rate. In other words, if I'm to take an hour off of work, I'm missing out on the wage I could have earned for that hour. Therefore, the wage rate that I could have earned is the price that I pay to use that hour as recreation. Consumption, on the other hand, is a composite good. Again, we're aggregating the number of apples and the number of oranges we purchase and making it one good. Therefore, we can place whatever price we want to on this good. This means we should always pick a good or a price level rather of $1. A price level of $1 makes the math easiest. On the other side, we have our income. Our income is going to be split into two sections, our non-wage income and our wage income. Our non-wage income is this first part, this capital M variable. This is typically given to us in labor supply questions. Conceptually, it's something like money I find off the street or some sort of allowance I'm afforded, any income that I don't have to work to earn. On the other end, we have the amount of money that I earned from working. W represents again our wage, whereas L bar represents the number of hours I possibly could have worked. Let's look at a different formula. L bar equals R plus L. R being again our recreation hours and L being the number of hours I actually choose to work. These two together, when we add them up, is the total amount of hours I have available to me, or L bar. Adding M and W L bar together gives us our total possible income that we can spend for recreation and consumption. OK, with this framework in mind, let's take a look at this specific question. Here we have, again, R squared times C. This is our Cobb-Douglas type utility function. We're also given some information that we can fill into this budget constraint, $10 per hour wage rate. Our non-wage income is 320. And we have a possible 168 hours to work with. So step one, let's analyze our utility function. And specifically, we're going to take our MRS, our marginal rate of substitution in this case is going to be our derivative of u with respect to r and our derivative of u with respect to c. And this is going to be with respect to r, 2r times c. With respect to c, it's going to be r squared. I'm going to cancel out. one of these r's, and we're left with 
2c over r. That's our MRS. Our next step is going to be to equate our MRS to our price ratio, just as before. Our price ratio in this case is P1 over P2, so it's going to be W over 1, or just W. So 2C over R equals our wage rate. Going further, we know our wage rate is $10 per hour in this question. So what we can do is say 2C over R equals 10. 2C equals 10R. So C is equal to 5R. Okay. From there, we're going to plug into our budget constraint to figure out our optimal amount of recreation. So we're going to say 10 R plus C equals my non wage income of 320 plus my wage of 10 again times my number of hours I could possibly work, which is 168. Then we're going to say 10R plus 5R from over here equals 320 plus 1,680, which should be 2,000. So 15R equals 2,000, or R equals... Hundred and thirty three point three repeating. Okay, from there we can also find our optimal amount of consumption. That's just going to be C times or C equals five times R. So R in this case would be our one thirty three point three repeating. Uh, it's going to be 666.67. 6, 6 and then finally, our optimal amount of labor is going to be L bar equals R plus L. 168 equals 133.3 repeating plus L. So 168 minus 133.33 is 34.67 for optimal amount of labor. And that's it.